It's late in the day, you're on to your final cup of tea and getting ready to wind down. But all of a sudden, you realize that your renders are missing the quality textures they deserve. So like many of us, you're going out, you're taking photos of textures in the real world and trying to put them into your renders. But you end up with results like this. Instead, what you should be doing is using real world textures. They go so far beyond using a mobile phone to actually detail real world textures and bring them to Enscape for us. Today, I wanna show you exactly how to import real world textures into your Enscape renders. To get started today, we're working with an incredible double voided space. And as you can see in front of us, we have a stone wall, a little bit of marble, some tiles on the floor, and a beautiful kitchen in the background. Of course, we have a skylight above and a room above the kitchen. Now, we wanna be able to take this into Enscape and create the absolute best renders we can. So let's go ahead and start Enscape. And while that loads, we wanna jump across to real world textures. Like every other render, we always start with our HDRI. So first find the perfect HDRI for your project. You can simply download an 8K or go in and change it to a higher resolution like 16K, for example. While you're here, you might as well go into the textures panel up the top and find the textures you need for your project. So I'm gonna need a series of tiles, I'm gonna need some stone, laminates, walls, everything in between. So I'm simply gonna scroll through these textures, find exactly what I'm looking for and download it in preparation for the next step. If you wanna search for a particular product like Taj, you can just type in Taj and it will give you Taj Mahal. If you're searching for brands in particular, you can go to the brand section, click on one of the very many, many brands available to you and either download the objects or the textures associated with them. So on topic of objects, of course, you can come into models and download some of your favorite models ready for the render as well. Once everything is loaded, then of course, we can jump into Enscape, have a quick look around. Obviously, Enscape enhances all our materials straight away and makes anything look just that little bit better. To get started, we of course want to import a HDRI. So we come up to the top to the visual settings. Then we go to sky and by default, it will be on clear. We want to change that to skybox and then we want to load one of our HDRIs. So for me, I'm simply going to use this historic city overcast, open that up, let it load and then adjust the rotation as I see fit. If for whatever reason that HDRI isn't right for you, you can change it at any point in time. Next, we wanna import some custom materials to make this scene really stand out. As you can tell, the generic textures from ArchiCAD are okay, but they're really lacking depth and that real world feel. So let's dive back into ArchiCAD. The first thing you wanna do is open up your material palette. You can either start fresh by creating a new material or you can duplicate one. Personally, I recommend just duplicating one, it's easier. So stonework type one, let's go ahead and duplicate that. We can call that real world textures Taj, for example, and press enter. All we need to do in this space is change our surface color to white, press okay, and then change our texture sample image in this pop-up window. Once you find your Taj Mahal gold that you've downloaded as a texture, you come into the 4K version, and you're simply looking for the color file, C-O-L. Go ahead and open that up, press OK, and it will import that texture. The key thing you need to do here is link the size of the texture and then adjust it to match the original pixels of the image. Now you can go ahead and change all your stand ARCAD settings in here. For example, the cover fill for the foreground, the pen weights and everything in between. But for the purpose of this, we're talking about Enscape. So go ahead and press OK. Now we need to fine tune that texture and we do that in the Enscape Material Editor. But before we go too far, let's go ahead and change our kitchen to Taj and also this side wall to Taj. Jumping back to Enscape, you'll see it automatically updates and we have a relatively nice texture. If I fly to the kitchen bench, you'll see it's a bit flat, it's lacking a bit of detail, it's lacking reflections. It's not really looking a million dollars. So. To take that texture to the next level, we go back in into ArcCAD and open our material editor. Search for the texture we've just created, being Taj, and then we're gonna add a couple extra items. First, we wanna change our height map to normal and import the normal map from the texture we've downloaded. After that, we also wanna add in our roughness. So we go down to reflections, textures, open up our files, find the rough and press open. Now we can adjust this if we want it to be a little bit more metallic, you know, Taj could be a nice gloss, shiny finish. And then we can go ahead and close that window. 
Jumping back into Enscape, now you'll see that our Taj Bahal is shiny. It has depth, it has texture. It looks absolutely beautiful. Obviously, all the other textures need a lot of work. They're still pretty basic and generic. But the one texture we have done so far looks stunning. After that, we'd simply repeat that same process for all the textures we've imported. Now, the best thing about working with real-world textures, ARCHICAD, and Enscape at the same time is once you've created these textures, you can use them in your ARCHICAD templates, which means you never have to create them again, you never have to re-link materials in your renders, and it speeds up your entire workflow. There's a little bit more work up front, but the payoffs are absolutely huge. If we then to adjust a couple extra items, you can see the new stone came into our fireplace, the travertine floor tiles came into play, and the stow render on the walls themselves. The render scene itself is already starting to look significantly better. Now, to top it all off, we could of course go into our asset library from Enscape and add in a few objects here or there, or we could add custom objects from real world textures. So, asset library, custom assets. You'll see I've already gone ahead and added a few, but let me walk you through the basic process. You simply press the create new asset button and a new pop-up window will appear. We wanna select import geometry and find one of the folders that you've downloaded. So for example, this is absolutely perfect. We then press open and Enscape will do most of the heavy lifting for you. Now, if you're using this long-term, you of course wanna include a title that's relevant to you and your projects. So name it whatever you like. Additionally, you can create categories so you can search for your items easily. I've already created the furnished category, but if you wanted to create more, just press the plus button. If you need a description to help find, remember what your objects are and where they're from, just go ahead and type in something like real world textures. Now, this is where we have to pay particular attention. Enscape will import the generic texture itself, but we also want to import the bump using our normal map and the reflections using our rough map, just like we did for our textures. So we open it back up, we find our normal map, we open that up and we find our rough map. We import both of those, let Enscape do its final bits and pieces. Lastly, we just wanna adjust our scaling. So this is in meters, meaning this couch is 336 meters long. What I generally find is if you move the decimal place two numbers back, you're gonna get the correct sizing. Lastly, to create your model, you need to hit the screenshot button to create a thumbnail and then save and export. For me, I've already created this model previously, so I don't need to do it again. I'm just gonna simply discard the changes. Once all your assets are in, you can use them like any other Enscape model. You simply place an asset, drag it, drop it, and let them appear. Obviously, I've jumped a few steps ahead and imported a ton of different objects into my scene so you can really see what's going on. But if I fly extremely close to this couch, you will see the exceptional detail that Real World Texture has gone into to create the perfect texture and high quality asset. It doesn't matter what object you fly to, those textures are incredibly detailed, scanned to perfection, and ready to use in all of your renders. After that, we simply set up our scene, turn on our frame safe to make sure we're rendering out the correct images, and then export and render. Anyway, that's all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button. And like always, I'll see you next week.